Today we're going to be looking at LaunchBox and specifically looking at WHD load support which has been improved in the latest version 13.1. So hopefully you know what LaunchBox is. If you don't it's a good front end to manage all of your retro games. There's a lot of videos out there explaining the setup of it on a lot of systems. I'm just going to be focusing on the Amiga, but yeah, check out LaunchBox at their website. I'll leave a uh, link as well. This application requires the .NET Core 3.1. Specifically, you're looking for the .NET desktop runtime version here. So I'm just going to do a fresh install. So I've downloaded LaunchBox 13.1 and we're going to get that installed and then we'll go into more of the Pacific Amiga stuff. So I've got LaunchBox opened for the first time. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to start from the beginning if you've already got a collection, but you'll have this menu appear if you've got LaunchBox for the first time. I'm going to close this down because we need to do a couple of things first before we start to import our ROMs. We'll close that window there and we're going to go to this little hamburger symbol here. Then we're going to go to tools. Let's go to manage retro arch and then i'm going to go to download and install if you're into the retro scene you've most probably heard of retro arch it's not an emulator itself management of of, of other cores and basically it contains a lot of emulated systems so we're going to wait for this to download and then we'll come back in just a moment okay and that's retro arch installed now we haven't imported any games yet don't worry we'll get to that but first i want to go into our user area and locate the launch box folder so you'll find it under c users and then your name and there should be a folder called launch box and then what we're looking for is emulators and then you should see the retro arch folder so within retro arch you've got a whole bunch of folders in here we're looking for one that's called system. Now in this system folder, we need to put our BIOS files. So that means our Amiga kickstarts because RetroArch doesn't come with Amiga kickstarts. So what we can do, we'll go open up a new window and we're going to go to our C, users public, go into public documents, Amiga files, shared, ROM, and there are all of our Amiga kickstart roms remember this is installed with the amiga forever pack which is the legal way of getting uh, amiga kickstart roms if if you've got them somewhere else off of the internet that's totally fine by you but basically you've got to make sure that you've got some amiga kickstart roms that you can copy into this retro arch folder here under sys in the system folder so let's uh, let's just grab all of these and copy them into system there we go we don't need all of them but it doesn't harm copying all of them over so there we go that's the bios is done now in retro arch we're going to be using a core called puae that's the amiga core and the emulator that's within retro arch launch bots will work all this out for us automatically and if anybody's wondering oh do i have to pay for launch box i've seen you've got to pay for it I'm doing everything in the free version here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the hamburger again, we're gonna go to tools, go go to import, and we're gonna go to ROM files. So it's similar to that menu that we saw right at the beginning when we opened it up. We're gonna import some ROMs. Really, we're doing our WHD load games. So we're gonna go next, and then we need to add a folder. So if I click on add folder, now in my downloads folder, I've got a folder called some games and in there is some Amiga games. Now, if I actually show you what is in there, I've got some Amiga games that are WHD load games in the LHA format. I recommend the LHA format for WHD load games. I've selected that folder, some games. You can see it there. Let's go next. Now, what platform are we importing the games from? So there's massive wide range here, but we're looking for Commodore Amiga, select that go next and then it's going to say well what emulator are you using well we've already gone through the setup of retro arch so now retro arch should appear here if you didn't do the steps before of going and uh, downloading and installing retro arch 
you won't see anything here. So let's select RetroArch and then it says, oh, okay, so RetroArch is built on cores, emulator cores. What we're looking for is PUAE. So let's scroll down to P's and then PUAE. Now you'll see there's two versions at the moment. There's just PUAE and there's PUAE 2021. Why is there a difference? Now there was a bit of a rewrite of the PUAE emulator recently. And what it meant was that it was using more processing power for real basic systems. We're talking about um, Raspberry Pis. Um, it was felt that the PUAE 2021 uh, version of of the emulator would be branched off and made and so this is basically for low end the 2021 but if you've got a PC PUAE is the core that I'd recommend using let's go next now we can choose to copy the files into launchbox so it will move it into launchbox and then a folder called games and then Commodore Amiga now this keeps things nice and tidy and this launch box folder could be moved around and if you've got loads of games by different systems you might want to copy or move those files into launch box and keep things tidy for the moment I'm just gonna say use these files where they're located because they're fine where they are and then we can search for game information using their local database which is recommended so yeah make sure that's ticked let's go next now this is downloading images and everything and your artwork for your games so let's click on uh, check none because a lot of this stuff like for arcade cabinets is just not needed the Amiga games weren't arcade cabinets we can have things such as uh, maybe the box front because a lot of Amiga games came with a box they didn't really come with a cart or a disc but maybe we'll want some screenshots maybe of the game title and maybe some of the gameplay there we go so those are the ones i've got to tick let's go next mu movies gives you preview movies of of the games i'm not going to go through the setup of that we're just going to go next bezels you don't have to worry about bezels that's a bit um technical for sort of like this this video we'll just go next again and then we've got a couple of options here so we've got false import duplicate games i want to leave that off i don't want any duplicate games these defaults here basically are good defaults to go with so let's go next again you've seen that it's ready to import but we've got benefactor and then it's got v uh, 1.2 so that this is our uh, file but you've noticed that it's picked up oh that's benefactor ah that's desert strike so it's identified correctly the amiga games so we click on finish and then we're going to start going through the import process so we'll just wait for it to finish importing and then we can see that it's starting to download the media now some games it might not pick up on it's, it's not picked up on lotus 2 for some reason uh, so we can go back to that later maybe and get some artwork but you see it's got the box art for uh, monkey island lemmings desert strike pinball games so yeah it's looking really nice as well and as you can see if i click on zool there we go we've got some screenshots as well that we can browse through as well so it's it's identified the games correctly now if you're using launchbox before version 13.1 you most probably would have found that it had just come up with the whd load name file the lha file and never pick up the artwork it's only this recent version 13.1 that there's been some great improvements to basically identify whd load games and and bring through the artwork so we're ready to start our Amiga game. Now I'm going to choose Pinball Dreams as my first game that I'm going to load up and for a very good reason and I'll show you in just a bit. So let's double click on the game. It's going to load up in RetroArch. We're using the PUAE core and we'll just go through the title screen and everything. Now we're on the main menu of Pinball Dreams. 
The way this game works is that you press an F key to play a table. Now, if I press F1 at the moment, I go into the RetroArch menu, which really isn't that good. That's not that useful. As well, if I press F2, uh, that gives me a save state and loads that up. F3, that uh, shows me the FPS. So I'm like, okay, we can't use the keyboard. What do we do? You press the scroll lock key on your keyboard and it turns on game focus. Now in RetroArch, what game focus means is basically all of those uh, hot keys of basically getting into the menu are totally disabled and the keyboard is fully usable by the emulator, i.e. the Amiga. So we've now got our keyboard usable. So if I press F1 now, the game starts loading. But you might be thinking, oh, okay, well, how do I get out of the Amiga if um, I can't get into that RetroArch menu? You just press scroll lock again and game focus is turned off and then you can press F1 and go through your retro arch settings again. So yeah, little known thing about game focus. So it allows you to play games that have keyboard support. So yeah, I can now start playing Pinball Dreams. And the gameplay is pretty smooth. As you can see, this core does a really good job of emulating the Amiga as accurately as possible. So yeah, that's basically the emulator. So if I turn off game focus mode, tap on escape twice, that takes me out of the game. And there we go, we're back into Launchbox. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, Launchbox, I, I really enjoy using Launchbox and this latest release with the WHD load stuff just makes things so much easier for us Amiga users. Let me know down in the comments if you use Launchbox and how you get on with it. And I hope to see you in another video. Take care, everybody.